Sorry about the poor lighting. Um, basically, I got my results back um, from my MRI, and uh, it's just this was just a follow up to, to let you guys know. Um, so basically, uh, I do not have a hernia in my stomach. Um, I have a hernia in my lumbar. I believe that they said an L6 or 7. Um, they said that uh, I have bone spurs uh, and pieces of bone, like bone grinding and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, and also, I have that in my uh, cervical, the neck part. Um, the very bottom of my neck is in really bad condition, they said, as well as my lumbar. <clears throat> they said there's bone grindings and bone spurs there too and um, my discs are almost gone on those on the two here and the two in the bottom of the lumbar so that's super <clears throat> I guess that's what I get for lifting stupid things for so long so uh, <clears throat> I'm actually they want me to possibly go get surgery to clean up my neck eventually they don't know exactly when I haven't talked to a specialist or anything like that but I am going to go get uh, stem cell shots done <clears throat> so um, so that way uh, um, I can get a little bit of a uh, compression pain that I get because there's no the discs are almost gone and get that out of there the surgery that I have to have done <clears throat> is basically to rotor rooter around my spinal cord because um, <clears throat> it's closing off around the spine the, the vertebrae is so it's giving me a lot of pain and <clears throat> inflammation and stuff like that. It's basically um, uh, arthritis in the neck and, and lumbar. <clears throat> so uh, that's uh, why I've been having issues um, with a lot of pain. Like strangely, man, my lumbar has been, I, I've been trying to do incline push-ups and it's given me that that crazy numbness, that feeling that I haven't felt in a very long time <clears throat> in my neck uh, and my back now, you know, from, and I don't know why it all of a sudden just started attacking me, you know, <clears throat> but uh, on top of it, on top of the, the nerves getting closed in on and the spinal cord getting closed in on, kind of gives me claustrophobia. But anyway, besides all that, <clears throat> uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting the stem cells shots done because that's going to take away a lot of pain, but I still have to get the the bones <clears throat> uh, ground out around and vacuumed up, whatever they do, suck all that garbage out of there that's that was caused from accidents at work and so on. <clears throat> so, um, and I think that's pretty much... Um, Pretty much it as far as like uh, no I'll, I also have um, wear on my hip sockets and uh, in the sacral I think it's called sacral of the the bottom part by the butt the bones there <clears throat> they're having issues as well um, So I got to get stem cells for where I can. I don't know how much that's going to cost me. Probably, <clears throat> probably uh, quite a bit. So, but I know that stem cells are pretty freaking awesome that way. So everything I've read is really good on them. Um, so I should be feeling like a brand new person after I get it done. I I don't know how long it takes to to heal up a disc or whatever, but. Um, I'm pretty excited about it and nervous. Uh, 
I'm trying to go through East West Health right now. I heard that they um, they actually like do some kind of a program, like where you can uh, you can pay payments or something like an in-house type of loan or something, which that would be freaking awesome, man. Because uh, it's hard to come up with like five thousand dollars to get something done like that. You know, it's uh, but I can definitely pay payments like, you know, like, like I do for a car payment or whatever. So, um, that'd be awesome. But anyway, um, my training has been modified a lot and I've, I've had to change it up because of all this damage and all this stuff that have, that's happened to me. So, um, I also found out that I'm a few points away from type 2 diabetes and they said my thyroid was good. They said, um, i trying to think what else they said was, they said basically everything was good except, oh yeah, my, uh, um, my kidneys, I have type or, um, I have uh, stage one and it's advancing close to stage two um, kidney disease and that's caused from uh, ibuprofen so that's that was freaking awesome that they told me to get on high amounts of ibuprofen to get rid of this and uh, They didn't tell me that I was going to have kidney disease from it. And then like a year later, they're like, oh, by the way, it causes kidney disease. And then a few months later, I got, they said I had kidney disease. And I'm like, oh, shit, I don't know what that is, you know, entirely. And the guy's like, oh, it's, he said it was not a big deal um, right away. But then I looked on online and it seems like it is a big deal. So. I'm a little bit nervous, you know, uh, I don't want to, I don't want it to go to stage two. I know there's five stages of it. And, uh, so I've been, I consume cranberries, um, uh, once to twice a day. And, uh, I've been backing off my red meat, even though like I've had people say, like the carnivore people say that red meat doesn't damage kidneys, um, but there's an overwhelming amount of evidence saying that it does. So uh, I would hate to be wrong and go just jump right into stage two, you know, and it's kind of scary because I was on a high amount of meat for a long time. They said that my kidney disease is from my ibuprofen, but... Um, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm nervous. So I've been, uh, I got, I, for a month around my birthday, I ate freaking, uh, I ate uh, some cake and ice cream and, uh, I went from not being pre-diabetic, like right on the border of almost being pre-diabetic to being almost type two. So it sucks because my, I have a family history of it and my family history is also to eat bad. So, you know, not only is it, you know, in my, possibly in my DNA, but it's also possibly in my, well, it was, it was on my mom and dad's, both sides have diabetes. And then, so and then the diet that we were taught to eat, you know, when we were young, you know, and, and you don't really realize too, you know, like, cause you, you're start drinking energy drinks and Mountain Dew just to stay awake. Cause you start working more hours at your job, you know, and then pretty soon, um, you know, you've put in, you know, in, in a 12 hour period, you've probably drank like three to six soda pops, you know, 12 cans and then maybe a couple energy drinks you know to get that buzz going 
<clears throat> and uh, yeah, it took its toll on me and I didn't even realize it. So I'm surprised I didn't just turn type one diabetic. There was a couple guys when I worked at Halliburton that actually became type one diabetics where they have to give themselves shots. I mean, they were just hammering their body so much. And honestly, I don't know how mine didn't turn either because I worked four extra days, which is 48 hours total um, extra in a month. Um, uh, on top of drinking three energy drinks and six Mountain Dews a day, every day that I worked, which was 10 days straight, four days off. And, uh, <clears throat> and I ate high glycemic carbs, uh, bread, you know, potatoes. I think that's why I'm so touchy now, you know, it's like, uh, my body's had enough of my shit. So it's, uh, you know, my body's like, oh, I'll just drop over dead if you don't watch it. So you know, with my kidneys, my diabetes, my spine, man, it was, uh, it's been difficult dealing with that because, you know, my, my legs are giving out a little bit, you know, when I, when I go to do something, that's why I was, that's why that, and then my neck, that's why I lost so much of my deadlift and my squat was, um, was due to that. So, but, um, on top of all that crap, you know, uh, my dog, <clears throat> Pickle, the bulldog, uh, Lapaha Blue Blood Bulldog, he's got a tumor growing, and uh, it's so big, I mean, it's been growing and it grows super fast. Tumors grow really, really fast. So this thing grew, and it was just a little lump, and he got his freaking uh, cone off and he chewed it. Well, when he did that, he split it open. And this garbage started draining out, which is nasty as hell. And so I've been cleaning it with these chlorohexa wipes or whatever. I think it's what that's what it's called. Um, they're pink surgical cleaning stuff. And I've been cleaning it. And this tumor, it's like... It, it's just extremely gross, you know, it's like a, but the, the vets already, they cut it off three times and they don't want to cut it off a fourth time. And, uh, I clean it twice a day. I give them CBD oil. I've been giving him, um, uh, this miracle cancer thing. It doesn't seem to be doing anything anymore. Like the tumor is, is you know, on top of, I, I give it shark cartilage, I give them turmeric, you know, all this stuff, you know, and I, and I have to give it in small amounts cause I don't want to give them, make them sick or anything like that, you know? So, um, anyway, I, this thing is so gross, like, um, and it, now that it had that little tear, it just opened up. And so now it's like a pocket. So like, I, I have to stick my finger in there and wipe inside the freaking tumor with this chlorhex wipe. This thing is that deep. It's like, I can almost fit my entire fingers in there. It doesn't hurt him, but as soon as I clean it out, all this white pus uh, and blood just start coming out. And the vet told me he's not in any pain, and so, and it's not affecting his health yet, you know, and he's, he's fine, he's still peeing, but his penis swelled up, and, uh, But he loves life. He runs around and plays and has a good old time and stuff. And then I'm just, it's really difficult to put him to sleep. You know, I just, I go out every day and I just look at him and hold him and pet him. And we play tug of war and we walk around together out here in the yard. And uh, nobody's ever treated him good. He's never had anybody that treated him good. He's never had a good owner until he came here and he's just had like a we've only had him for like three or four years now and uh, 
He just upsets me that there, I didn't have him since he was a puppy, you know. But I'm glad I rescued him and gave him a good life. Um, he was a damn good dog. Really good dog. I wish there was a way they could cut it off one more time. and It's just, uh, I hate seeing him go through that shit all the time. That tumor is big already. It's he had this huge piece like on the other side of his gut. It was like this freaking big, like a mass, but it was like that thick. It's like a half a brick. I ain't even joking you. And the other side, it was weighted down too. And I started giving him all this medicine and herbs, and they shrunk. the The one that was big like a brick shrunk down, and then it shrunk down even more. And then the one on the other side where the tumor is, where he fucking took his cone off and chewed. He's like a ninja. He does his shit. He does it. He does it to me over and over. He gets out of the damn thing. I've wrapped it up and he'll like, he'll move the dressing after he breaks the damn thing off his head and then chews his guts open. And, uh, what I mean by chew his guts open is he'll chew the tumor and it splits open. Yeah. Anyway, makes me want to vomit. But anyway, he just, he does this and then he, and I'm trying to clean this damn thing up and I want him to heal up and live a long time. But I, I've noticed he's getting tired. He gets tired a lot. We change his blankets like every couple of days, you know, we have to wash them. Um, he has to be in a kennel and sort of the, every, all the dogs because, uh, I have, well, he likes to, the cats like touching him and messing with his tumor and the other dogs like messing with his tumor and he wants to kill you at that point. Like he, he'll attack a cat or a dog if they mess with him. And, uh, I don't mean bite. He'll attack them and try to kill them. And, uh, my great Dane can't be wandering around either cause he gets into all the garbage cans he gets into all the cat litter and he'll eat the poop all over and drag it and slop it like just shit, literally cat shit all over the fucking house. And uh, we made the mistake of letting him stay out um, like three times because we felt bad for him. <laughs> we lost that sadness for him to be, you know, locked up. So, and then, uh, so we're just, we don't know exactly, you know, like... So back to the story like we don't know exactly when pickles gonna be have to be put to sleep i i hate doing that whole thing where you got to bring him down they shave his arm they stick him in with a vein and then they put that shit in there and he dies you know i just i just uh i just wish he would pass away in his sleep you know if he was gonna pass away I mean, he's an old dog for his, for being the type of, because he's a bulldog. And I think they, bulldogs typically live eight years, eight to 10 years. And he's, he's close. He's like, should be like eight, eight years or something like that. So, but, um, anyway, I guess, uh, that's my updated version of my elements and my puppy. So, but anyway, uh. I'm not going to lose faith in anything, you know, like, uh, you can't give up, you know, you got to keep moving forward. I don't believe in, I don't believe in death anyway. Like death is an illusion. You know, we lose our bodies eventually, but I, you know, I had a near death experience and then I've also seen ghosts. I videotaped them and, um, took pictures of them. So I know we don't die. So <clears throat> that's what gets me by. When I lose my cats and my dogs and my family members, you know, I just, I don't believe that, that that's it. You know, I mean, I, I actually know that we don't die. So it's, uh, it's freaking awesome, but that I actually have, that I've proven it. So anyway, uh, Y'all have a good day and uh, take care. Hope everything is 
going good in your lives. Um, take care.